Are y'all ready to get started? Yeah. All right. For those of you who may not know, I'm Maxie Sorliano. I'm the Gray County Sheriff. I'm honored to be here today to welcome you all to the official campaign announcement for Nathaniel Moran for Congress. Yeah. As a 43-year veteran in law enforcement, I know the importance of having strong leaders who support law enforcement at every level of government. Nathaniel Moran is that type of leader. I know from working with Judge Moran on regional projects, Judge Stout and I in Gregg County, and Judge Stout's here, and from my relationship with Smith County Sheriff Larry Ray Smith, <laughs> that Judge Moran will be a congressman who supports law enforcement and who has the courage to make the right decision even in difficult circumstances. I'm proud to stand here with him today, and I'd like to introduce to you another strong supporter of law enforcement, State Senator Brian Hughes, who will introduce Judge Moran. Thanks, Sheriff. Good morning. What a great day to be in East Texas, a great day to be in Tyler. I'll tell you what, I've been in Austin too long this year, and it's good to be back in Texas. It's good to be home. It's good to be home. I, I thank the Lord for this community, for the people in this room, and even this venue. I see our landlords are here. This venue, which has become, even recently, such an important place for announcements for the community to come together on important issues and to, to express our shared values. What a blessing to get to be here with you today. A lot of people talk about leadership. And uh, the, the men like those behind us, they don't talk about it much, they just do it. And that's what I see as I look around this room, people who are doing it, who are serving, who are going first, who are putting themselves out there. And we're all here because we know Judge Moran, because we love Judge Moran. And let's talk about leadership. Look at what he's done. Think about our community, a beautiful, diverse, vibrant, growing community. And look at how he has brought together different sections of our community, even different sections of various political parties and interest groups. And he's brought people together, not by compromising his values, but by finding those shared values, which we all can work together on to move forward for everyone. That makes everyone's lives better. That's what he does. He does it quietly. He doesn't send out a press release every time he does something. He's just quietly, faithfully serving. And how many of us remember? How many of us remember? My goodness. Not long ago, uh, with that uh, dealing with COVID-19 and all those challenges we're dealing with, and how, how many of us were so thankful to have Judge Moran at the helm in our community? Wasn't that, wasn't that special the way he the way he handled that? The way he handled that. The way he took the threat seriously while balancing the needs of our community and of business and of individuals and of healthcare. And that's how he operates. That's how he does things. That's why we're all here. You know him. You don't need me to tell you. Uh, we're thankful for him. Uh, he's uh, in politics. You know, we have uh, there's there's uh, there's workhorses and there's show ponies. He's a workhorse. He's a workhorse. I, I can't tell you how much I believe he will stand out in Congress in wonderful ways as someone who sticks to his values, moves forward, doesn't demagogue, doesn't try to grab headlines, just gets the work done and encourages others to come alongside while giving them the credit for it. So many things we could say about him, his wonderful family in this community that we all know, and my goodness, his, his whole family, his brothers and, his, his, and all, the, all the extended family and the ways that they serve, the legacy his father left us and his wonderful family. Many things we could say about him, but we're thankful for him. He is one who serves. He is a true servant leader, and I was proud to get behind him right away in this race. I know most of us in this room were, so let me step aside. Finally, I know, I know I'm going too long. It's all right. Let me step aside and introduce to you uh, my friend, my brother in Christ, uh, whom we love and respect, our next congressman, Nathaniel Moran. <laughs> Wow, thank you so much, Senator Hughes and Gregg County Sheriff Maxie Sirliano for those wonderful and kind words of introduction and endorsement. Uh, I was just blown away 
that immediately out of the gate, these two and so many others in this room and across Northeast Texas would come out in support of me running for Congress to, to represent Northeast Texas in Congressional District 1. And thanks to each of you here who have been with me for decades as we have endeavored to serve this community and beyond this community. I want to call out a few uh, here today, but there are so many in this room, I, I, I just couldn't tell you how much it means to me that you're here today as part of this important announcement. My special friend from Gregg County, Judge Stout, thank you for being here today. Yes. Judge Stout and I have been working on some regionalism projects uh, for the last five years, and it has meant so much that immediately he mentored me as a county judge and a local leader to understand how to be responsive and listen to the community and to solve problems. So thank you, Judge Stout. Thank you. Judge LaFleur here from Marion County, we appreciate you being here as well. A strong, fast friend that we've made uh, a personal connection immediately with. Many others here as well. Cole Hefner, representative from just a little north of us in the northern part of the county. And several mayors here today. Uh, Mayor, uh, Mayor Don Warren, our current mayor, Mayor Martin Hines, and Mayor Barbara Bass from the city of Tyler. Thank you guys for being here today. And then behind me, Sheriff Smith, one of my fast friends. Somebody that stood with me through thick and thin. I tell a lot of folks uh, all the time that uh, the relationship between a sheriff and a county judge is like a, a marriage relationship. It takes a lot of work and, and a lot of grace and a lot of patience, but I'll tell you, there's no better law enforcement man than L Sheriff Larry Smith, and I appreciate him being here today. So many others to recognize and to thank, and I'm, I'm going to get to my family here in, in a moment, but um, I just want to say again, thank you for being here. I also want to say this to Congressman Louis Gomert. Thank you for almost two decades of service to this community. Being a congressman in Washington, D.C. is not easy, and it could not have been easy for Congressman Gomert over the last two decades, and he had valiant service on behalf of this community fighting for our East Texas values, and I want to appreciate and thank him for that service today. Amen. Amen. Now let me tell you a little bit about my story, if you didn't know it. 45 years ago, when I was almost two years old, my mom and my dad packed up a station wagon. They drove halfway across this country to come to East Texas to start a Bible college. They did so with four young boys in tow, and we were all looking for new adventure, a new adventure we found. In fact, since that day, it has been one adventure after the other. And today, a new adventure begins. Today, I announce my candidacy to serve Northeast Texas as its representative to the United States Congress in Texas House District Number 1. Growing up in East Texas, I spent my childhood exploring the woods on foot, trying to keep quiet in church, and learning how to be tough and independent, fighting for every scrap at the dinner table as the youngest of four boys. <laughs> my loving parents raised us to be spiritually strong, to be mentally disciplined, and to be men of, of hard working character. They also helped us to grow and to, to be productive adults, to see other individuals with the equal and eternal value that was endowed with all of us by our Creator. And to learn to grow in service to one another so that that, in fact, could be our life's definition. We could serve God and we could serve others in so many different ways. And I'm proud that two of my brothers are here today, Dr. Christopher Moran and Patrick Moran. So proud to have you guys with me today. I'll tell you that strong Judeo-Christian ethic and that biblical worldview remains the driver that guides both my personal and professional life in every aspect. I am deeply grateful for my East Texas roots, for the lessons I learned growing up with a father who taught me about Barry Goldwater, who introduced me to the influences of Ronald Reagan and Rush Limbaugh, 
and who exercised his last presidential vote to support the election of President Donald Trump. Yeah. Yeah. I'm proud to say I'm a ditto head and uh, have been for decades. And I'm also proud, I was recounting for somebody the other day, they were asking about how long I've been a conservative, and I can take that back to the fourth grade. When I cast my mock ballot in 1984 for President Ronald Reagan to be elected to his second term as president. <laughs> Don't get after me, Senator, for election integrity there. I, just, I promise, it was not a, a real ballot. Since that time in fourth grade, I can tell you I've been an unabashed and unapologetic conservative. Here with me today is my wife of 22 years, Kena. Together we are ready to take the challenge of fighting the morass that is Washington, D.C. and spreading the values central to all of the East Texas families. Without her support and encouragement, I would not be here. So thank you, Kena. Kena and I know that securing our borders, limiting government overreach, eliminating foreign influence, and pushing back against cultural Marxism are what is needed to protect the hopes and dreams of the next generation. And speaking of the next generation, I'll tell you, we've done our part to build one. We've been blessed with four kids, uh, two boys and two girls, ages 16 to, down to four and they are the center of our world. Each one of them is finding their way in this life, but we know what they need, what every child needs growing up today, is for government to get out of the way, for liberty to reign over tyranny, for truth to stand in the midst of shifting cultural norms, and for the opportunity for their own hard work and their good decisions to create a better life for them, but not just for that end, but that that life could be created again so that they could serve their community and others. That's what it's about, service. <laughs> Kina and I do our best to teach each of our children to focus on their responsibilities because we know that in doing so, the rights of everyone around them to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness can be best protected and preserved. That sentiment of personal responsibility seems to be one that's lost in society today and certainly in politics. But for our family, it is a constant and central theme. Now I'll tell you, every job and life experience that I've had over the last 47 years has given me a better chance to prepare for today. Beginning with my first job in the rose fields outside of Arp, Texas, in the middle of the hot summer sun, when I learned not to cut corners, to my current job as Smith County Judge where I've learned to reach consensus and solve problems by first building trust and building relationships, each one of those lessons is ingrained in my memory. Even going back to the time when I was in college and working jobs to pay my way through college, I value each one of those experiences. First, working as a server at Mercado's restaurant here during the summers and the holidays, I'll tell you, as an adult, that taught me again how to work under pressure, prioritize needs, and communicate clearly. Sometimes even with those demanding customers that were looking for some more salsa. <laughs> and then again in public education at Cavazos Junior High in Lubbock, where I worked to support my new wife and finish my MBA and my law degree, there I saw again that it didn't matter what clothes you wore on the outside, what mattered was the character you maintained on the inside. And since that time, I can tell you, I've sought to serve my family and my community wherever I've been, whether it was as a Tyler City Council member back in 2005 to 2009, or the founder of the White House Education ISD Education Foundation, the president of Discovery Science Place Board, or a member of a number of other volunteer service positions. I sought to serve this community. My life's calling from the very beginning I knew was one of public service. I've tried to undertake that service through the lens of those famous three words from General MacArthur which were ingrained in my mind almost 30 years ago as a plebe at West Point. Those three words, duty, honor, and country. They've been with me ever since and they've driven 
the service that I've given to the community. I will never forget those words. So what can you expect of me? What kind of congressman can you expect me to be? What can Northeast Texas expect me to be? Here's the man that I hope to be. This is the man I hope that I've proven to be over the past two decades. First, a man of principle. Somebody that is unwavering in the principles that I have rooted in that biblical perspective, that biblical worldview. Second, a man of ideas. A man that's going to build relationships and through those relationships learn from others about the problems that need to be solved and to stop and to listen. You know, so much of today's politics is driven by just wanting to talk. So few folks are willing to listen. Listening is key to building relationships. So I want to be a man of principle. I want to be a man of relationship. And out of those relationships and those principles and that listening, I want to be a man that comes up with good ideas to solve the problems that affect Northeast Texas and this country and this world. That's the type of man you can expect from me. I'm not a divisive person by personality. I, I try my best, and I guarantee that I'm going to pledge to you to be a statesman that will represent all of Northeast Texas, the entire region, from Texarkana down the Sabine River, over Longview and into Tyler. It's going to be a representation for the entire Northeast Texas region, and it's going to be a representation based on the principles of East Texas, based on listening to our constituents, and based on problem solving like we've done here in Smith County over the past five years. The cornerstones of my political construct will always be faith, family, and freedom. You can be assured that I will not stray from that from here on today. One of the many things that I've learned though in my years of public service is that it's not for the weak. It takes a strong leader with resolve to do the right thing in every situation. It means taking tough stands on issues even when your friends are on the other side of those issues. It means making high pressure, time sensitive decisions with limited information when lives are on the line. It means being the first one into work in the morning and being the last one to leave. And it means using critical thought and prudent action to solve problems rather than letting emotion, personality, or pride get in the way. I hope and believe that those who have been with me these past few decades would say that those are my proven characteristics that these are my proven characteristics, that I lead with unwavering principles, unrelenting determination, and unmatched toughness, to stand firm, to do what's right, and to solve problems. That's the way I intend to lead in Washington, D.C. That's the East Texas way. So, here's my questions to you. Are you ready? Are you ready to help Kena and me win this race and become your next congressman for Northeast Texas? Yeah. Are you ready to stand beside us to fight for America's future? And are you ready to keep me accountable to stay true to the values I've espoused today, those values that are the values of every family in East Texas? Are you ready to do that with me? Yeah. I know you are, and we're ready too. Together as a family, as a community. Mom, did I recognize you? I haven't recognized my mom yet. I saved, I saved the most, most wonderful person besides my wife in this world with my mother here today, and I'm so blessed to have her. She, she gave me enough spankings growing up so that I stayed straight, and I learned what discipline was, and I stayed on the right path, and I learned to serve other people, and I can tell you the heart for service that I have came from my mother. So thank you, Mom. So I'm ready. You're ready? Let's do this together. What do you say? Yeah. Thank you each for being here today. God bless this country. God bless Northeast Texas. Let's go out and win this race. Thank you, guys. Oh, yeah.